Welcome back, distinguished babe friends. Today I want to look at eight photos I took and put on exhibition back in 2017. But before we do that, quick word from this video's sponsor. Me! Yeah, there's not actually a sponsor for this video, just... If you remember the last time I did one of these print talk videos, I mentioned that my printer went conk on me. But since then, and $300 later, a little bit of wrench turning, I got the damn thing back online, so... If you ever want to buy one of my weird prints, you just get yourself to shop.kprizeblitz.com. Link in the description and pinned comment, so you don't have to learn to spell that. You can do so, and now the print will actually probably ship really soon. Okay, with that out of the way, we can talk about these photos. For the better part of the 2010s, I was stomping around the Lake Superior watershed with a big old 8x10 camera, one of the biggest cameras I have, wait, not one of the biggest camera I have, shooting all sorts of scenes and stuff, and, you know, it, it evolved into a very large body of work that would best be presented in a book form, but I know I'm probably lazy, and actually making a book will be a lot of effort, so it might not ever happen, so if anyone out there from a fine art book publishing is watching this, you want to help me? Send me a message. But anyways, in lieu of having a book to display like these hundreds of photos, what I would do is book exhibition space in various bars and coffee shops and whatnot and just and just display little subsections of those photo series, you know, and lump those photos together by some topic so that they're coherent. And this one that I put on display in a bar in 2017, I called Broken Duluth because all the photos I took were like of act of God moments where something collapsed or just something went wrong and something was destroyed and I happened to be nearby with my big old camera. So that's the, the summary of this, these photos. So we should just dive right in and start looking at them. First up we have this photo of a collapsed gas station. So the story behind this one was it was like it was April 2014 Nice warm winter spring day, so I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go for a bike ride. Got on my bike, started pedaling. About two or three blocks away from my house, my phone rings, and I'm like, oh, someone's calling me. So I stop, answer the phone, and it's one of my friends who's like, dude, this gas station over on this street just like fell over. Go photograph it. And I was like, oh, do I want to? Yeah, I probably should. So I turned around, biked back, grabbed my camera, hucked myself over to this gas station, and found this scene. And just before you, just before you're wondering, nobody was hurt. There was a guy in the truck, but he apparently like, you know, leaned back far enough that nothing bad happened, you know, cuts and scratches, didn't have to do any emergency stuff. But I got there with my big old camera, backed up, crawled on top of a snow, icy snowbank, and set up just a little higher and everything else to get a nice kind of downward view on that, and took this photo. You know, if you pixel peep, we can see, of course, the smashed car. I kind of like that we got not one, but two people taking pictures of the same scene with their little uh, cell phone things. And here I am with my big-ass view camera being like, Bang, my picture will destroy yours. <laughs> no, not really. I don't know. I like to, I like to dramatize stuff. Photo one. I got eight photos, so I'm going to move fast so I don't spend five minutes off her photo and make this a half hour video. I don't, I don't know if the math even adds up. Well, anyways, let's keep going. The 2013-2014 the winter, like, for some reason, every structure that was ready to just give up the ghost gave up the ghost when there was so much snow on top of it. So the gas station happened after this one, but a couple months before, in December 2013, mm, the whole canopy of the Grey Salon Plaza just went BOOM! And again, nobody was hurt, like, lucky because a lot of people hang out under there with smoke and whatnot, and that's a lot of metal to come crashing down. And my own personal experience with this was that I was just hanging out right across the road from that moments before it happened. We were just chilling in this, like, bar space where you could see the building, you know, having a good time. We leave, and then, like, we go to Miles for a bit, and then... Everyone goes back to the car, and I drive one of my friends back to get into her car. And, like, in that, like, hour that we were away, this happened. We're like, oh, my God. Like, I could have witnessed this, but you know how luck is. And also, the thing about this photo is, like, this might be one of the coldest I've ever been taking a photo. Like, it was so 
frigidly cold, and I like I knew I had to get down there first thing in the morning before they started cleaning it up. So this is like right as the sun came up, and it's like still got that night chill to it. And oh, my hands are so cold taking this photo. But like I said, no one got hurt. They eventually restored it and rebuilt the canopy, and all is well. There was one third collapse in this the winter that I didn't get around the taking, which was the one of the local strip clubs had their sign fall down from all the snow and. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get around to that one before it got cleaned up, so pretend that I'm showing it to you. To interject for a moment, I want to just also have a note that when I did this exhibition, you know, I had prints for sale, and I understand that, like, the, everything depicted in this, in this, in this photo is like someone, it, it affected someone in a negative way. And, like, I think there is importance of shooting this kind of stuff, so to bring in, like, some historical context, because I think, I think a lot of people don't, like, put together looking at, like, stuff they find interesting in photos from like a hundred years ago and seeing the exact same thing in a photo taken today like there's this like you see a picture of a random person walking down the street in 1901 it's like ah oh, look at that fashion blah 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 you look at then you show them a picture that you took like the last time they're like oh creepy that person's still alive and like ah. to get that thought process going on people who would view this exhibition i i dug into the local college library that has all their old vintage photos free for use online in really high resolution and just found some old photos of Duluth of the same subject where, you know, something bad happened and a photographer back then got a photo. So I printed those off and, and had a couple of them up as well, just, just to compare and contrast. And I'll show you those three real quick that I put on display. The first is from 1901. It's a view at Superior Street and 7th Avenue West where Inline crashed. Inline being like this train thing that would like chunk, 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 haul people up and down the hill. Apparently one day something gave out and woo bam! It rolled down the hill and crashed. And as you can see, you know, crowds of people just standing around looking at this. The second one, we have Lake Avenue North, 2nd Street, after Storm of July 2000, 2000, 1909, which is a flooded out street. You know, we see the sidewalk collapsing, people just walking by. Very, very similar to some photos I'll be getting to pretty soon in this exhibition I had. And finally, one of my favorite classic Duluth photos by T. Zweifel. Bystanders wash the board of trade, building collapsed during a fire, 1894. Which was a pretty stunning photo for the time, because, you know, the guys, you know, using, using something like this, and, like, just exposures weren't as fast back then, so to get that building to, like, stop mid-collapse is pretty, pretty technically impressive. And then you dig deep and you see these kids running and fleeing, like, ah, get away! A classic photo that is very remarkable. The classics out of the way, let's finish up by looking at the last five that I presented in this exhibition. Okay, the next two photos come from July 2016 when, when we had this ridiculous thunderstorm with just really high winds that kind of shredded everything. The, the lightning was just like, just like a strobe light, just endlessly, just pulsing, pulsing, pulsing. And the thunder was just like, boom, 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 boom. Like just a constant rolling thunder of hits and strikes and strikes. So like if you've ever like heard about like the drum artillery in World War I or just like a nonstop barrage of boom, 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 boom as, as shells are falling on Verdun. Like I assume this is the closest I'm ever to come to experiencing that in real life because it was just so many flashes and just a solid just bam, 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 bam of thunder. And... It obviously took out a lot of trees and power lines and whatnot, so the next day I went out and I found this scene of a tree that had been taken down in an alley that had knocked down some power lines. You know, a little later in the day, so teams had already gotten around and started clearing up the brush on it. So yeah, that's, you know, it's it blocked up the alley, took out some power lines. And assuming the power lines weren't a threat or they would have been blocked off, I'm going to walk this close, but... So directly across from that last photo, if we follow those power lines snaking out of the bottom of the frame, we turn around and we have this down power pole that fell onto a dog bakery and pet nutrition center. And as you can see, when the pole fell, it snapped in half. And that's pretty impressive. I don't believe I've ever seen a telephone pole just snap like that. But again, that's the wind was insane that night and that's what happened. So that's the two photos in this series taken in the July 2016 windstorm adventure. Let's move on to the final three, which all happened during the June 2012 Duluth flooding. Alright, 
So this flooding happened after a nightfall where we just got a ridiculous amount of rain for the region and overwhelmed the storm sewer system and just flooded everywhere. Since most of the town is on a hill, I assume all that rushing water just exacerbated the erosion that caused sinkholes and stuff to collapse and it was just kind of a complete day of chaos. Like you want to drive across town, it's like, oh, it's a freaking zigzag, 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 trying to find a route across where the roads hadn't collapsed or are flooded out. And, you know, it was definitely a moment to remember. I think I took maybe somewhere between 12 and 15 photos with that camera, which doesn't sound like much, but it wasn't that camera. It was my bigger Deardorff at the time, which weighed like three times as much. And operating those is kind of exhausting so to shoot that many in one day is actually a lot of photos so I was beat by the time I was done. So I only have three of those photos in this set right now but maybe in a year and a half when the 10 year anniversary comes around I'll go through all of them so here's your chance to subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss it in 18 months. <laughs> so like I said a lot of this rainwater caused erosion and sinkholes as we see in this first photo of a car in a sinkhole. When I saw the news the next day, like this is one of the first pictures I had seen was someone who had taken a photo of this like right after it happened and like realized that, oh wow, stuff is getting out of hand. So when I was free, I went to that same spot and took my own photo of it. And as we can see some of the details, we got ourselves a bottle of mysterious yellow liquid. You know, and the car has some political bumper stickers on it and some Star Wars, who is your daddy stuff going on. So that was the first photo of this series that I took. Not, not the first I took that day, but just the first of the three I'm presenting. After I took that one, I threw the camera over the shoulder and took a little walk around the corner, see what was there, and then I saw, I'm like, oh my god, like this is that moment when you're like, never probably gonna stumble across this again. Which is, of course, the photo of the Volvo just completely stuck in the flood water. So about a month later after I took this photo, I was at an event and just happened to hear someone talking about them experiencing the same thing and it, as it turned out, it was the owner of this car. So I showed him the picture, we had a little conversation, he told me the whole story of it where he thought he could back out and leave not thinking the water was as deep as it was and then of course it was deeper than he thought it was and you know the car just kind of floated and got stalled. So. For a while, while it was still raining, he had to climb on top of the car, just sit on the roof in the rain to not be flooded out and drowned, I guess. And then sat there for a while until the rain stopped and the water level got down until he could actually get out and crawl to safety. And I guess the, the reason that the door is open here is that some kids actually went around looting after the rain stopped and it was safer to go out and they broke into his car trying to see what they could get. Obviously, they didn't take the bicycle that was pinned in the back seat. From what I've learned, he tried to repair the car and it just like wouldn't ever start again. So rest in peace, Volvo. So then finally we get to move on to the last photo of this whole talk. Oh my God, we're that far already. So this one is another road which the profile is kind of a big dip up and down. And as you can see, like I said before, like looks like all the rushing water just eroded everything underneath it, causing the entire road just to collapse down. As we can see back here, like this, this rock that's poking out is actually a manhole cover, so that kind of shows you how far this road actually collapsed, like that piece is still where it would have been before everything fell. So we can see this part of this driveway and sidewalk that had fallen and like this the huge gap over all the soil was eroded away underneath. And of course off in the distance we got ourselves a good crew of spectators checking out the damages. I mean, obviously this road is repaired now. It's one that I bike across quite often, and I always think about this photo, and I go through here like, damn, this road got jacked up bad. I have no idea how long this video is actually ending up being right now, as I've just been rambling for a while into the camera, so I'm gonna shut up and end this video. If you want to look at any of these photos in bigger detail at your own leisure, check out the description and pinned comment. I'll put a link to the gallery on my website that has all these photos, and if you click into each one, there'll be a button for view high-res detail and it lets you just zoom in to each little area like I've been doing, but you know, wherever you want to look and just see what details you find. So, oh shit. There's four photos from this flood that I, oh. Okay, one more photo. <laughs> Boy, did I plan this good. So now the true last photo of this video. This is a, uh, again, where there's kind of like a creek gully type thing that got washed out and 
as it got washed out, it took out a road. As we can see, there's a orange pipe of sorts that got pulled down in the big chunk of the road. You know, for, for scale of how big this collapse is, we got a couple of younger 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 kids in this photo. You know, one guy taking the snaps and the other girl looking around. Kind of a little bit longer exposure and I caught it right as her head turned. So we got a weird freaky double face look. Someone's bike got totally lost in the damage. Poor bike. And like, I remember taking this one, I had to crawl down into like where all the the, the water creek runoff had happened and it, it, had, it had, the water had cleared out by then but it was just a thick, goopy muck and like my feet were just like getting sucked into it. Like, I set up my camera and had it all squared away. By the time I got out, put the film in, hit the button, and I was done, I realized that it, one of the legs had sank and the camera, you know, tilted it off kilter. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna get quick sanded here if I stay around. But the photo turned out and as you can deduct, I did not get quick sanded into the mud while taking this photo. Okay, so everything I just said about going to the website to deep dive in these if you want, that still holds true. And aside from that, mm -mm -mm, another successful photo talk. So yeah, if you like these, hit that like button and leave a comment and go look at photos and then buy a print. And we will see you the next time I do one of these.